girls, welcome to The Joy of Sticks. My name's Mark, uh, I'm known on forums and my own website as Stickhead, and I'm a huge Atari ST fan. Now this channel's been going for a couple of years, but I've only actually posted uh, a handful of videos of Atari ST gameplay uh, to augment my, my blog, my reviews on my blog, uh, and I wanted to develop this a bit more kind of been inspired by people like Steve Benway, um, Ian Wilson, X-File and many others. I uh, really enjoyed their videos so I wanted to do something similar but uh, along the lines of you know, a bit of an Atari ST theme. Um, so here it is. Uh, I mean why the Atari ST? Uh, uh, it started really uh, with my dad. My dad was a bit of a tinkerer. He was a maintenance man by trade, which uh, he used to work for a, um, the YMCA who had a block of flats, and obviously their own buildings where they had a, a leisure centre and things like that. And his job was basically just to go and fix stuff when it went wrong. Um, so he had his hands in all sorts of pipes, you know, a bit of plumbing, a bit of electrics, uh, a bit of building, anything really. Um, so you know, during the late 80s when microcomputers were gaining in popularity, it's only natural that he would get one in the end. But uh, money was quite tight for us when I was little, um, so it wasn't like you could just go out and you know, get this all singing or dancing machine and bring it home. Um, so for a while we used to look covetously at, at a friend of his who had a BBC Micro. Um, I remember vividly, it was one of my earliest memories, uh, definitely my earliest game playing memory, uh, was playing Repton at his house. Um, I, I, I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, I was only a little kid so I didn't really know what I was doing but you know, he showed me the keys and this is how you move and stuff like that. And I don't know if you've played Repton but it's a bit, it's like a Boulder Dash clone for the Acorn machines. Um, it's very very similar, it's not quite as high placed and as frantic as Boulder Dash but it, it's the same thing, you dig out earth and you know, if you dig earth from underneath a boulder it drops, so you've got to collect diamonds avoid monsters, that kind of thing, but it's, it's a bit more puzzly in nature, a bit less arcadey than, than Boulder Dash. And uh, so I, I just played this tiny section of the game. Uh, I remember moving from one, this narrow corridor, moving from one end of that corridor to the other. Uh, and on the way, I must have dug out a bit of earth that a boulder was sitting on. Uh, and as soon as Rexon moves away from the boulder, obviously the boulder falls down and fell down with a crash. And I jumped out of my skin. And from that moment on, I've been utterly hooked as far as video games are concerned. I mean, you know, that was such a, an emotive moment. Um, yeah, so yeah, so um, we couldn't afford a BBC Micro, but my, you know, my dad saved it up. And one day he brought home an Acorn Electron, which is, it's, I suppose it's its little brother, really. It's very similar to the BBC Micro, not as powerful. And a lot of the games are compatible with both. And this friend who had the BBC Micro had a lot of games that could also work on the Electron, so he, he copied them for us. Whoops, lazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we started pirating very early in our family. Um, yeah, so he copied us a load of games, Repton being one of them. Um, obviously became one of my favourites. Uh, and that was it, really. And it was at that point, you know, it wasn't just about games. You know, my dad was a tinker to pass a bit of that on to me so you know we got into the programming side of it and you know trying to make art pieces of art on there with the primitive art package that came with it and things like that so yeah great time great time and then I moved from there my uncle um, he, he gave me his Amstrad CPC um, one Christmas which was just amazing I mean he gave me that because he bought an Atari ST um, but that actually, playing my, my uncle's Atari ST wasn't my first experience at the Atari. My first experience was at a friend's house. Uh, he was quite a bit older than me. He was going to high school at the time. I must have been about, I don't know, if I was about 10. So was he going to high school? I don't know. Anyway, um, at this point, he, he had a lot of friends uh, that went to the same school as him. They all had Atari ST, so he used to organise parties where they'd all come over, they'd all bring their machines and games and things, and 
they'd set them up and they'd uh, network them and play multiplayer populace and, and all things, crazy things like that. Um, and I just happened to be along there. His mum was my mum's best friend, so I, I came along to one of these things. And um, there was an Atari ST set up in his living room on his, on his TV playing Super Sprint. And uh, Super Sprint on the Atari, you can play three player. So two people on the joystick and one person on the keys. Of course, because I was the youngest there, I was demoted to keys, racing as the blue car. Um, but that, that was just phenomenal. That was excellent. I really, really enjoyed that. Such a great game, Super Sprint. I mean, even to this day, absolutely timeless cl classic. Um, I still do prefer playing on keys. Um, but I was hooked from there. Um, what other games did they play? They played uh, the real Ghostbusters, which is just a shocking game, but you know, to someone who'd been brought up on Acorn Electron games and an Amstrad CPC lockiness, uh, that was incredible. Uh, and Whirly Gig, that was also it's a bizarre maths based mouse controlled shooter. Yeah, honestly, I might have to do a video on it because it's just, it's yeah, it's unreal. Um, so, yeah, shocking games, really. But to see these games running for me was just incredible. Uh, left a really big impression on me. Obviously, I must have spoken to my mom lots about it. Uh, so, uh, some time later, it must have been about a year later, she she bought me an Atari ST for Christmas, uh, which was an incredible present. Um, I knew about it leading up to Christmas. She told me beforehand. Um, so yeah, what a great Christmas! I, I remember sitting there playing. <laughs> I had one disc. And it was from a magazine that I bought a month earlier when I found out that I was getting the ST. Uh, it was an ST format and it was a cover disc with two demos on it. Uh, a demo of, is it Puznik? Yeah, Puznik, like a sliding block puzzler. And a demo of Goldmax, which had the first level. Uh, I was playing those to death Christmas morning when Mom came in. And she has this habit of uh, uh, you know, surprising you with a present a bit later on in the day when you think it's all over, bless her. Uh, and she brought in this carrier bag and dumped the contents onto my lap and it was just full of, of discs, individually wrapped. There must have been a hundred discs, all individually wrapped in rapid vapour. Uh, and when I opened them up, they were, they were all discs, sorry, ST discs, with, with games on, pirated games. Uh, so to all of a sudden go from these two demos, which I was loving, I was having a great time, but to all of a sudden... I've got hundreds of games. Uh, that was incredible. Uh, yeah, I'll never forget that. But anyway, th that's where my love affair with the Atari ST started, and it, it, it's still ongoing today. Um, to this day, I mean, until just recently, really, I've always had an Atari ST set up wherever I am. Um, I mean, it's, it's sat a long time alongside Super Nintendos, uh, Nintendo 64s, PlayStation 1s, original Xboxes, Dreamcasts, uh, and it's still set up today alongside my Wii and my Xbox 360. Uh, it's never been neglected, so, yeah, I was kind of stuck with the ST before really kind of this retro craze became the thing. I mean, it, to me, it was never retro. I mean, I don't know, obviously I knew it was old, but uh, I never saw it as like retro computing. It, you know, it was just my ST, it's just part of what I did. It's kind of like when you, you listen to old music, like, uh, say, Led Zeppelin, you don't think, oh, I, I listen to some retro music. You just listen to music you like. That's kind of how I feel about, about classic computing. Um, oh, I was going to say something there. Oh, never mind. Um, yeah, so that's where it started. And, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this YouTube channel all about my beloved Atari ST. And I, I hope you enjoy it.